Crossing the Wire. All right, welcome to the second episode of Crossing the Wire. This is uh, basically us dudes uh, getting together, an excuse to hang out, uh, talk about anything and everything. And uh, yeah, with me is uh, Mel, uh, Mr. B, uh, Mark Bali, and of course, uh, Marvin and Hendrik from the band Bad Burn. So uh, yeah, how, how has the week been? Uh, you just say the Bad Burn band. Just <laughs> <angry>. <laughs> You know, I'm the bad burn band. Uh, so yeah, what is what's been up? How has your uh, individual weeks been? Uh, what what have you guys been busy with? Listening to construction sounds next door, I think, is uh, one of the best things you can wake up to. You know, <laughs> instead of grabbing your coffee in the morning, grab uh, something else. Yeah. Cheers. Like something of them things. <laughs> Cheers. Salute, boys. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like how have you been? Uh, how, how have you been uh, spending your time aside from work? What work from home? Actually, I've been working from home for as long as I can remember now. Uh, aside from work from home, uh, if you see behind me is my son's uh, classroom. So All I right. homeschool him. So I divide my time between you know I divide my time between work from home then. Uh, my son's classes and uh, uh, sempre the house chores. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty much living here, working here, and I hardly ever go out. I only go out when I have to buy stuff. Supply run, huh? Yeah, yun lang. In work mode, and field art, I mean, is it? Uh, no, I'm actually. Uh, I do uh, work from work for. Animation studios, uh, TV, oh, nice. TV production houses do storyboard work, mostly conceptual. Pero consultation lang. I haven't really been, I haven't really been working like uh, full time. So I'm basically on a work for hire uh, setup. Um, I do a lot of conceptual work for uh, in, you know movies, commercials. But you know, right now I'm working on a concept. For an animated TV commercial, so that's what All right. this is. All right. Uh, paano nga ba nag-form ang Bad Burn? I know there's a lot of uh, funny stories with uh, the formation of Bad Burn. There are different theories. There are different uh, timelines. So we wanted to get the official story from you guys. Uh, being that there's two of you right now joining us, we're probably going to get two versions. So uh, yeah, tell us about how Bad Burn got together. And I know this is uh, pretty much the current incarnation of Bad Burn is like one of the I don't know. I I stopped counting after like the fifth incarnation of Bad Bird. So why don't you tell us about it? Arben goes first. Mm. Yeah. So he can refute. <laughs> nah, <but laughs> there's always been two uh, like origin stories for the band. That's when I first discovered it, and and you know I guess that's when the whole thing started for me. And then Bad Burn also started in '96 when Hendrik joined the band. So, and and I think they're both true because if I didn't have that experience with one of the bruds in UST back then, with you know drawing me into being in a band, bringing me to Perf Studio, I wouldn't have met loads of motherhood for one thing, and I wouldn't have discovered this whole band thing too. And then a couple of years after that, um, after meeting a couple of dudes from you know different bands when we started playing at Club Dread, that's when I met Hendrik. And then you know, we we found out we there were more things in common between us than we thought. So and we went to the same building in school. So we kind of see each other every day anyway. So <laughs> yeah. This is a little long, huh? Um, so in 1996, I was in a band called Mass Carnage. Like some of you must have probably seen that band perform several times. It was a club dread. Anyway, uh, I was in a band called Mass Carnage and uh, in one of our shows, I think we played alongside a band called Lethal Injection. And that's how I met uh, 
that's how I met Marvin. There was a time I think Lethal Injection's bass player left, so I was asked to fill in the spot. Uh, and that's how I met the other guys in the band. Uh, you know, um, anyway, we started jamming as Lethal Injection with me playing bass. And then by some, I can't, I don't know exactly how it ended up, but uh, we found ourselves in uh, uh, Fourth Estate in the studio of Boom, Boom the Yupai of Pula. And he was forming this uh, groove collective, uh, you know, under the Vibe Station uh, uh, label. But anyway, he wanted to come up with a live act. So uh, I ended up together with our drummer uh, being the rhythm section of that live act, that, that okay. band. Okay. Um, so, you know, uh, the band featured, uh, you know, the Vibe Station artists like Kulai, uh, Legit Misfits, okay. um, uh, this underground rap thing. What's, it, what's their name? Brain something? Brain Snatches. That, uh, that was yeah, our yeah. favorite. one of our favorites. And, uh, Brain Snatches. Uh, uh, East Flavor. And us. But, uh, and us. At the time, you know, we were juggling our name between Lethal Injection and something else. So anyway, uh, at that point, I think Marvin and I were really serious in forming a band and writing our own songs. So, you know, um, we were thinking of, as far as I can remember, we were thinking of retaining Lethal Injection. Uh, but I think uh, Boom suggested that, why don't you just keep the, the name of the band you had before, which was Bad Burn, because it was just one word it was easy okay. to remember. But not easy to spell for everyone. <laughs> yeah, but not easy to spell for yeah. everyone. Yeah. I honestly don't like the name of the band. I wanted, if you were to ask me, I wanted a name like the Dillinger Escape Band. But, you yeah, know, that name, me too. Shit. that name is that's already right. taken. So <laughs> that's it. It's bad burn from that day on. And then uh, I think we started to come to our own, you know, we did a lot of uh, shows with, with that Vibe Station thing, uh, but um, I think it wasn't until um, in uh, 1999 that we officially became a band. And, mm -hmm. and I think uh, when David Abaya joined the band in 1999, I think that's, I would probably consider It was 98, what? right, when Floyd left. It was 98. Hendrix, yeah, Hendrix sure? likes to mix up his years. Yeah, Dave was up 98. That's the year Cloyd left. Uh, we started writing songs or rewriting your songs with Dave. And I think that's when the, st when the song started taking shape. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it actually ended up on the first album, Bound by Blood. Mm -hmm. You know, Bad Burn ha has been at it for, for a long time. And um, I remember messaging Marvin like, um, several years ago that I really you know the endurance is is incredible and I admire it for a band who's, who's been active for a long time um, so I'm sure that the music or you know uh, the kind of music that you guys play have, have evolved through the years was it was it a, a long diff like a big difference from the time you guys started up to you know the Kai uh, the kind of music that you develop now I think it's just uh, the, the simplest way to explain it is, you know, simple to a little more complex. And the complexity was brought about by how we kind of learned a little bit more about music in general. Because, um, okay, Hendrik mentioned an old band of mine, Lethal Injection. That's where I think I kind of met a lot of other bands too. Um, before that, there was the short, you know, the, the very first version of Bad Burn was pretty short in Perf Studio. And mm -hmm. I ended up not being with anyone in that band although i see some of them still see glenn um edward you know them guys see bong mm -hmm. friends on facebook oh, shit. and these okay. were the guys we started playing with edward alfara yeah oh shit and that yeah. was the first version of bad burn two guys saw in perf mm -hmm. studio okay but i didn't know that so that was a oh. band with them you you and them yeah so it was nathan on drums uh glenn uh, and and Edward on guitar, and then Bong. If you guys remember Bong from Perf Studio, yeah, Canivel, yeah. right? Bong, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I remember. And then uh, 
I think after that, like everybody in that band got dissolved. Back in UST, Kuya, do you remember those two guys from Salot ng Kafa, Jude and um, Kit? This is right before I met Hendrik. Kit, I remember so, the, the chubby guy with the curly hair. Two big, um, like overstaying students at Kafa. You know, if you've ever, uh, if you've ever been to UST, I, I see Kit. Yeah. Yeah, in the 90s, there was this old building where school supplies were sold, right? For us architecture students and uh, in engineering, advertising, we mm-hmm. had our own dedicated bookstore where we bought supplies for other stuff purposes as well. But anyway, so there were these two guys bigger than me at the time. And then, you know, they came up to me. They're like, Pare mid banda about. So I'm like, who am I going to take on first? I, I guess I'll take on the bigger guy because the, the, the kind of smaller dude might, you know, back off if I take on the bigger guy. And then they were like, Like, all right, shit. Okay, then. So, and you got to understand being in UST at the time in, in 94 or 95, being where we were, the building, when people hit you up, that could lead to something a little more serious than just being asked to join a band. So, yeah, that's when Lethal Injection started. Um, our old drummer, Bell, uh, I think she, she played for Celts Cross a little bit also. Um, and she started uh, teaching music, drum, uh, percussion in UP. Um, she just didn't like Bad Burn. She was like, no, I, I want something different. So we went with you know, Lethal Injection because it was a little closer to uh, my influences. You know, it's, a, it's an Ice Cube uh, album title. Mm-hmm. We went with that. And then for, I think, just a year and a half or nearly two, that's when Lethal Injection was up. And then that's when we, you know, uh, we lost the re- uh, I lost the rest of the boys. Um, our drummer, Jay, had to recover from something serious because uh, I don't know if you guys ever remember Jay from 96 in USD in front of the Commerce Building. The dude would have a six-pack of Red Horse at yeah. seven in the morning calling Thank my you. mother's house telling me to go to school because he had a six-pack. And I would go too. So, you know, we'd be there at eight in the morning drinking in front of the building. And but then, you know, he had to he had a breakdown and he had to recover. So he did. That's what that's what he did. And he went to the States, I think. And then a guitar player, Punk Lawrence, you know, he, he went on being the, the architect that he was. And our bass player, Doc, uh, I think pursued the whole architecture thing too. Um, and then yeah, so that's when um Hendrix 96 Bad Burn came about. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, part of that I'm, yes, I've yeah. always been curious. The, the sorry, uh, sorry, sir, uh, you did not raise your hand. You must raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, a gentleman hand from uh, the United <laughs> States has raised the finger. I raised my hand first. Yeah. No, I just wanted to add, I remember meeting Marvin in Perf Studio. Because I was in the same time. So I was in the same time. I was in the same time. Then the first time I met Marvin... I was playing Femtex therapy. Tapos Marvin comes up like, Uy, okay na. <laughs> I think si Nathan niya tayong nagdudumps nga yata. Intruder. Oh, <laughs> Intruder alert. Yeah. Tapos I think Marvin, Marvin tried to rap over it or something. Femtex. Yeah. <laughs> Parang ganun yun. Tapos from then on, yun na yun. Doon na nag-ano yun. Yeah. Retreat yun. Ikaw, Mark, ikaw, uh, Mel, do you remember your... Well, the first encounter where you saw Bad Burn play, uh, Mark's encounter was uh, basically where he met Marvin at the studio, at Perp Music Studio, obviously. But do you remember the first time uh, you watch, uh, you got, any of you guys watched Bad Burn and saw them on stage? Uh, were you already hanging out? Because I know that Bad Burn and Loads of Motherhood history is very, it, it, goes, a, it goes a while back. But eh? was it at the mm-hmm. gigs nakagad after that? At the studio, it, I'd say. Yeah, and it was as early as the Lethal Injection um... Uh, band, right? The the little injection band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Even yeah, before the Bad good. Burn band, yeah, we've been hanging yeah. out and yeah, yes, the birth the, the studio. The glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hendrick, yeah, the you wanted yes, to say yeah. something. Yeah. Actually, i've I've known I've known lo- I've known loads of motherhood uh, even before uh, I was in Bad Burn. Uh, as early as um, being in schizophrenia and being in mass carnage. Right. If I'm not mistaken, we've you know we've played along each as uh, uh, we've played along with each other in several right. shows. Yep. For That's like right. a couple of years prior to the formation of right. Bad Burning. That's right. That's Dude, true. Why don't you 
tell everybody about schizo and uh, mass carnage a little bit yeah because i think um a lot of how we are up until now as a band has something to do with you know everybody's like um, formation yeah well okay uh schizophrenia was a band that uh i formed or I think, no, actually, Schizophrenia was a band I joined when I was in high school. Um, we did a lot of uh, cheesy originals. You know, actually, we were, we were trying to be a hair band, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better term. We were trying to be a hair band because our influences were Van Halen, Skid Row. Uh, I believe that we tried to audition in Club Dread with Skid Row and a Megadeth cover, I think, and a handful of originals. But I think it wasn't until 92, 1992, that we auditioned in Club Dread in Timog Avenue that we became Club Dread regulars. And that's when we started getting serious with a lot of songwriting, you know, uh, writing original songs. But our original songs actually sounded like the bands that we were listening to at the time, particularly Skid Row and Megadeth. But it was, uh, I think, after a year that we decided to come up with more heavier, heavier songs. And... Um, Our drummer, our, our drummer from Schizophrenia at that time, uh, this was our drummer before, before John Carpio, uh, befriended uh, uh, an actor going by the name of uh, Ian De Leon, who was the son of a very famous actress. Anyway, we started hanging out with Ian De Leon and uh, Ian actually was the one who introduced us To the mu- you know, to bands like uh, Sepultura, Napalm Death, Slayer. Although I think some of the ba- ga- some of my bandmates have already been listening to Slayer, but I've been listening to Metallica. But it wasn't until Ian started coming, you know, I mean, he, it wasn't until we were hanging out together that we started writing heavier songs. And then uh, I think. It was also at the time that we started covering, you know, Sepultura, Pantera, um, what else? Uh, yeah. Other other songs from Megadeth. And I think that's when uh, we started to become a thrash band. And mm-hmm. by mid-1995, we were already a full-on thrash yeah. band. And, and I think with the addition, uh, and this was, I think, also when John Carpio of Goo and uh, Loudwater joined the band. He was it with Tembe Tikbalang then. Um, oh, okay. And speaking of Tembe Tikbalang, that's another band I would like to cite as a big influence. Uh, they, were, they were a very, very, very huge influence on, on well, me personally. Me personally. Um, I, mean, I got to be friends with the band and I, I got to hang out with them, you know, uh, in the early days. And they were the ones who introduced me to, uh, you know, the, the, their kind of hardcore. Uh, they introduced me to the Bad Brains. And I think the Bad Brains actually had a very big impact on, on me as far as trying to mix, mix certain genres when you write songs. Although at that time I was already, you know, into bands like Faith No More and Living Color, but when I discovered yeah. the Bad Brains, that changed everything for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, there that was Schizophrenia, and then uh, in 1995, uh, due to you know personal differences, we broke up. So the remaining members, uh, the drummer John, myself, Ram De La Torre, the guitar player, who eventually ended up with End of Man. Uh, the remaining members, Kamin Tatlo, decided to form a new band. Actually, there's a, this is a funny story. Um, uh, we didn't have a singer. So uh, I decided, you know, maybe, maybe I should audition. So I auditioned, <laughs> you know, playing bass and singing, you know. Uh, um, I can't remember what, what my, my, I think my audition piece was uh, a new level because I think it's one of the few songs that I could sing and play bass at the same time. Well, you don't technically sing except in the chorus part, I think. 
<laughs> or it was, is it in the verses? I think it's in verses. Anyway, that was my audition piece. So anyway, <laughs> my bandmates were like, dalawa pa lang sila at that time, no? So, so Ram and John were like, no, we're getting another guitar player and we're getting a singer. <laughs> so... <laughs> There goes your dream. Uh, yeah. so anyway, <laughs> you didn't even let you try. There goes my frontman career. <laughs> no, but uh, the, yes, the, the reason that uh, you could have been Mike uh, Patton of I, the I, Philippines. I confident enough to actually audition as vocalist for Mass Carnage was because I had I had already been singing and playing bass uh, in schizophrenia, but you know, but that's a different band, and I think. John and Ram had a very different idea because at that time they were, you know, they were at the time they were heavily influenced and they were really listening to a lot of Death Angel, Testament, and a lot of the Bay Area stuff. So anyway, to cut a long story short, that's how I met Jay uh, of uh, Goo, who actually I didn't realize was a huge, you know, thrash fan. I mean, he like. A lot of thrash, and he was also into Iron Maiden. I mean, he's a metalhead, actually. So mm-hmm. Jay came in, and we also got a guitar player, see Mike Michael Jean of uh, Death After Birth. So um, this might sound like bragging, but when you know when Patrick Rydenbach found Let's. out that we had, uh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> when Patrick uh, Rydenbach found out that we had formed the new band, there was. There's no audition. That's it. We went in there. We have a we have a new band. It's Mass Carnage, and that was it. And it went on from there. And then we ended up recording. Uh, we we rent. We ended up recording two or three songs, I think, for the for the right. sequel of the Alphanumeric Sampler. Yeah. So right. that's where that's where I first heard your the Loads of Motherhood song. Um, Gravity and pain, and I think you have another song in that compilation. Uh, compilation, I think. Uh, waiting. waiting, waiting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm sorry, amnesia. I can't remember the other track, but gravity and pain. That's where I first heard it. And there are other people there too. Iconoclast, um, Screwheads, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, shitloads more. Goo also. Yeah. So yep. There. Yeah. Crossing the wire.